for a book review of The Blue Castle by the oh so lovely L.M. Montgomery. This is a standalone book and the only standalone of hers that I have read, but now after reading this I will be reading many more L.M. Montgomery books. I had only read um, Anne of Green Gables and the Anne series and then part of Emily of New Moon. Emily of New Moon did not suit me so much so I had kind of not thought about reading her for a while, but then through, you know, kind of a just course of events, I ended up hearing about the Blue Castle from like four different sources, uh, unbeknownst to one another. And so I definitely want to, wanted to read that after hearing them talk about it. And it just sounded so wonderful. And so then this May, I did a buddy read with uh, Katie from Life Between Words, Kate from The Novel Nomad, and Emma from A Bookish Princess. And we just finished this a couple days ago. And it is now one of my most favorite books. I'm going to reread this to death. I just cannot wait to reread it and reread it and reread it. So in case you don't know, The Blue Castle is about Valancey Sterling. And there is some controversy about her name because I think maybe technically it is supposed to be said Valancey, um, according to a podcast that I just listened to. But the whole book, we were all saying her name Valancey and I kind of think Valancey sounds nicer. So for the sake of the review and just, um, what am I trying? Consistency. I'm going to say Valancey since that's what I think I'll jump into saying anyway. So Valancey Sterling has had somewhat of a sad and meager existence. She is 29 and unmarried, which is very scandalous in the day, and basically just a huge disappointment to her family uh, because she's unmarried and because she's just different and unique and they just don't know what to do with her. She doesn't fit the Sterling mold. And uh, basically her whole life, even now until into adulthood when she's 29, they're basically telling her uh, what to do all, all hours of the day, what to eat, um, you know, what to wear. She only has this one dress that they say she looks good in. And just controlling her as much as you would an infant, like, like a toddler. And she isn't, they don't even really like her reading because that's frivolous and she should just spend her time with her family. And maybe if she spends enough time with them, she'll just be normal like they want her to be. So needless to say, she's somewhat of a disappointment to them. And she's been really docile and passive her whole life, just kind of taking it all in. And you just hear about all these terrible instances where she's treated unjustly and just blatantly unfair. And um, she's not really believed when she does speak up. So she's just learned kind of to keep her mouth shut and lay low. And that's kind of how she learned to cope, how, how she's learned to cope. So basically from, you know, all of these years of this kind of miserable existence, she starts having chest pains and she's getting nervous. They're happening more frequently. So she visits the local doctor and he says, I'm really sorry, but you only have uh, at most one year left to live. Your heart is going to give out any excitement and you are just, you're not going to be here very long. Um, and that is where the plot takes off. And basically Valancey Sterling then lives like she only would have if she were dying. And it is just such a lovely, lovely read. And um, there were several things with the plot. Like I, I just didn't know exactly what would happen from there, but I just kept being more delighted and more delighted and more delighted. And this book does at certain points have those just really, um, romantic uh, nature, d very descriptive uh, passages about nature. And it's such a delight to read and so fun, so fun. So I really do recommend this if you like Anne of Green Gables. And the character of Valancey, I think is just such a great female lead because like I said, in the very beginning of the book, she's very docile, very passive, doesn't really make any decisions for herself. And then it's so neat to see the evolution of this character and her sort of come into her own and realize that her life is kind of up to her. She doesn't have to leave it up to this family that doesn't even really know her. And also another fun element of this is that uh, there is a love of literature in this. Like I said, her family does not really want her to read. They think it's frivolous. So she only gets to snatch uh, time here and there before her doctor's appointment. But then after the doctor's appointment, she's like, oh, forget that. Like, I really want to read. And there's this romantic nature author called John Foster, and she adores his books. They just really, she 
feels like he's such a kindred spirit in his love for nature and how he kind of feel like feels that that nature shepherds the soul and just so many beautiful quotes from him so I think that's great to have this um fake book being quoted in it I just think it's really cool and I just really enjoyed this and um it just it felt very different from Anne of Green Gables it felt very unique and of its own and I also think it's really special how this is a standalone but I became so drawn in very quickly and it felt very satisfying at the end it is only about 250 pages but it to me felt very complete and just very satisfying and another thing that I also love about this is that it is um the reading comes extremely easily but not because she's not an excellent and outstanding author this is so eloquently written but it just flows so easily and it was just hard to put down at points and so excellent so I will definitely be checking out more Ellen Montgomery standalones and anyhow I will see you guys for another video soon and have a lovely day bye